begins again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for more Psycho Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. It's Monday and the start of the week. Oh, my God, did Hollywood screw up? Yes, I screwed up. You know, I've been complaining of knee pain, and yeah, I found out what it was, and it's looking like surgery. So, you know, I guess I'm getting old. Uh, you know, it sucks getting old for all you youngins out there. You will get to my age. I always thought, you know, I'll never get like that crap. Who am I kidding? I'm broken. I was deadlifting because I've been working out heavy, you know, lifting heavy. Next thing I heard a crack and, you know, a couple days later it starts hurting and hurting and boy does it hurt now. And, uh, yeah. So it looks like uh, probable, uh, so not possibly, but probable, as they said, surgery. Uh, to get it all fixed up, so that is eight weeks out of it. <laughs> eight weeks of bed rest after that. You know how the doctors are. You know, I'll try to get it in half. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, I was scheduled to go up to NCOM in Indianapolis, and I won't be able to do that for uh, all those that were supposed to meet me up there. have to get these fixed so I don't walk like a gimp the rest of my life. Uh, you know... <laughs> Well, you shouldn't be wearing, using a cane right now. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that ain't such a bad idea if I didn't want to look ridiculous. No, nah, I'm just kidding, man. You know, I don't want anybody who uses a cane think I'm being a schluck. Uh, I do actually got a good one with a big skull head on the top. Maybe I should use that one. Uh, but I just wanted to get that out as soon as possible. I hate hospitals, man. You know, all this COVID stuff going on. I don't want cooties going into the hospital. That's where it's mostly going to happen. You watch. You watch. Uh, got a bunch of stuff coming up in the news today. And it seems like I got a different stalker now. You know, as the subscribers go up on YouTube, so does the trolls and the haters and all that good stuff. Do non-stop emailing now. It's like, you know what? I get it. People get upset when I can't get the emails back to them. But you guys got to realize, I got, I got a lot coming in. And I'm not going to sit there all day and go through every single damn email. You know, I divide them up in a group of 20. And then I go the next day, group of 20. And in the meantime, more comes in. So, be patient. I am trying to get to you. But anyway, this hater, this stalker. Troll, whatever you want to call it, e e uh, email me this article, and I'm going to go over that article where there was a bust, four million dollars in a meth bust. Now I don't know if it had anything to do with clubs, because usually what I'll do is I'll look at some of the titles of the articles, and I say, okay, let's bring that on the show, that one on the show, then I'll read it and give my opinions on it, you know, I'm reading it fresh, just like you guys. So anyway, he goes to me. I've watched some of your videos. I've listened to some of your shows on, uh, what was it, uh, Radio Free Public or something. I didn't even know we were on that damn thing. Uh, and you talk about how only a few do stuff in motorcycle clubs, but you're lying. Uh, there's been incidences of whole chapters doing it. And quite honestly, I've said that. It's like hooked on phonics don't work for haters. They don't want to go through the whole show and hear what I have to say in my final thoughts. See, my final thoughts is where, where I really give my opinions on what we just went over. I have my monologues, which is discussing news of the day or thoughts that might pertain to what we're doing. But I usually try to get to everything in the end of the show. 
So obviously the dude didn't listen. And I've said, said this in numerous segments of the morning mayhem. That I do not approve, I do not support, and will I never support anybody selling that crap. I believe it has gave a huge black eye to a lot of motorcycle clubs. I also believe that a lot of motorcycle clubs don't approve of that either. I believe most of the time you'll see them get rid of the people. Because they do not want the heat. Going up against the feds with a 98% conviction rate isn't damn easy, man. Unless you got the damn money. It's usually the bigger clubs that ask for dues to increase so it offsets what they have to pay in lawyer fees. And that's another reason why a lot of clubs get upset. Is, and some are even saying, hey, you do that, you get caught, you're on your own, man. We're not paying it. Because the lawyer fees get so damn expensive, it's, it's not even funny. But getting back to the meth, and now it's fentanyl, for Christ's sakes. That's getting, uh, you know, popular on the street. Why, I have no freaking clue. You know, why would you want to do something that if you screw up and take too much, you're going to end up six feet under or in a freaking uh, crematorium? Why would you even risk that stuff? What kind of high are you looking for? One good thing about 420, you've never heard a story about anybody ODing on that stuff. They might get stupid on it, but it wasn't the THC that brought them down. So again, I will say unconditionally that I don't support that kind of shit. I don't look upon it good. I think it destroys a lot of lives. And I think there's others involved in that stuff other than a few people in a motorcycle club. Meth has to be right up there with heroin, man. Heroin is the devil's drug, I call it. Uh, and you know what? If that's the devil's drug, freaking meth is a demon drug. Because that, you know, have you ever seen them pitch the before and after pictures of somebody on meth? Tell me that doesn't destroy lives. And one thing that I always preach on this show is bikers do all kinds of stuff. For the community. Most bikers are seen as hardworking people. Most are seen helping the community over and over again. There's a motorcycle club in Janesville, Wisconsin, man. They have freaking runs for shelters. They have stuff for food banks. They got one of the best freaking strip poker runs. I can tell you that. Uh, but they're out there helping the community. It only takes one person to screw all that up. And I think that's what we see when I do these articles, my op-eds, my opinions, is people are seeing more of that than they are to good. Let's be frank. When you see somebody from a club involved in something in the newspaper... You got a page, two pages, right up. But when you see the good that bikers do, we got a story coming up on that. It's like one or two paragraphs. Or 30 seconds, 45 seconds a minute on uh, a video that they're talking about it. And trust me, we're the dark side. Pound dark side, everybody. You know, and again, if you don't know what that means, hey... We covered a bad stuff, man. We're dark side, man. What can I tell you? So that's going to be coming up. And, you know, we try to show that as best as we can. Let's come at it from a different angle. I'm a parent. I'm a grandparent. I'm sure a lot out there is parents and grandparents. They do not want to see their loved ones hooked on that crap. 
And I think as a biker, even when, you know, you're in the crap on the street, man, that was, you know, two things that you never wanted to get into. One, you're always going to bring heavy heat on yourself for not, you know, a payoff ain't that good in that racket. Too much risk, not enough payoff. But we didn't want to destroy people's lives. You don't want that image of being that meth dealer. It's funny, I heard a story about this one schluck. He was cooking in his garage, next thing you bl it blows up. Couldn't even cook it right. But anyway, blows it up. And there's all kinds of problems that come out of it. Oh, he's a biker. He was this and that. And next thing you know, it's the rules of tens like I used to use in the tattoo uh, business. One bad customer review is going to get you ten people that ain't going to look at you again. Because that one person tells one person, then it just keeps on pyramided from there. And I believe that is the same thing with all this going on. Again, I don't know if this had to do with bikers, but this guy was just on my freaking nuts. And I like addressing issues. Yeah, we got the biker stuff, but in the monologues, I like to address some of the subscribers. I don't know if he's a subscriber. I know he's a hater. Uh, concerns. I try to give my best opinion for that. Hell, I'm still freaking catching hell about recommending RCs over MCs. It's like, you know what? Grow up. Not everybody's into that life. Not everybody is willing to do what they need to do to stay in that life or put the commitment in because they got this going on or that going on. So they just want to be a part of a riding club. But you get all those haters, and most of them are fake-ass haters if you ask me. Well, what happened to you? Why are you doing that? <sighs> Again, previous episode, I talked about it. Go look at it. Now, I can guarantee that I'm going to receive more stuff from subscribers over my stance on this. It's just like that one schluck that said, well, one percenters don't care about what everybody else thinks or what independent thinks. And like I said, well, if that's the case, what do you care? You know, we don't care about you. Why you go to the biker rights organization to fight off all this profiling and stuff? If you don't want to uh, care what everybody else thinks. I do. You know what? Even your probably own members. Don't look upon that kind of stuff good. Because they too. Have kids in their teenage years. That can get hooked on some of that crap. How would that even make them feel. Knowing oh man my kid got hooked on the crap that was made from us. My God, that right there is a vicious type of thought right there. And it's all possible, man, because you never know what, who's doing what. And that is a sad state of affairs that everybody else has to have this blanket put on them for what a couple morons are doing. Have you, you know what, with the meth dealers, you know, I, I've seen, I've known a couple... And it's like, dude, man, you're pushing all this stuff. Where's your money? Oh, wait, right. That's the same uh, guy who, hmm, hid 35 G's under his freaking mattress to be found for the cops because he was too stupid to keep it separated from him and uh, what was going on. But, hey, I'm not here to tell anybody how to do their business. Not telling you how not to get caught. Or get caught and lose all your freaking money, man, that you're going to need for that lawyer. And that, you know what, that is an interesting deal. I do not know, because you always got to do a cost analyst type of deal. Okay, I'm selling this much, making this much profit. Next thing you know, you get busted. Now you got to figure lawyer cost in there. And the time you got to spend behind bars. 
at the end of the day, I don't care if you're making a million freaking dollars a year on it. By the end of the day, you're going to end up in the hole. Meaning you didn't make a damn thing from it. So why put others through that kind of stuff? I've always said to stop all this nonsense. You should learn from the 20s here in Chicago, from Al Capone. Everybody from the round the world knows Al Capone, for Christ's sakes. They'll know him, but not Wrigley Field behind my back. <laughs> That's what they know of Chicago, is Al Capone. But you figured the feds would have learned from Prohibition. Weed wasn't illegal back then, and there's a whole thing about weed, man. It, you know, it has to do with the immigration coming up through Mexico, and them people didn't like them, and, you know, the hemp losing out to it, it, everything. The hemp actually was beating out the timber industry, I think. But we're not here to talk about the history of, uh, Ill, you know, being illegal here in the United States. But if they just freaking legalize everything, I don't think... You would see as much violence as you do not right now. You wouldn't see as much shady shit going on. On one point, I hate it. On the other point, it's like, damn, man, people are hurting right now. Uh, they don't have the money. They got to come up with their money to, you know, do this or do that. But I don't think that's the way you go. I don't care how you make your money, just don't hurt others in the process. I think that's a fair way of thinking about things. Many people ain't going to agree with that. Like I said, there's going to be a freaking bunch of asses. That email, hey, you're a prick this, prick that. And I'm not saying all clubs do that, man. I'm not saying all chapters of particular clubs do that. I'm just answering what was sent to me, giving my thoughts on it. You got a guy who sends this in. He has to be an independent. He has to be probably a rub or, you know, whatever you want to call him. But he says, you know what? You're always supporting these type of people. And hey, look at this article. Well, okay, I'll look at the article. On the show, again, I do not know if it has to deal with bikers. I don't think so with that kind of uh, money, if you you know what I mean. Because that's way up there. That's on a different scale. So I don't know if it has to do with any clubs. But at least I give the opportunity to ask me those questions. And that's what I'm responding here. So we're going to go over the news. Look at these stories. And then afterwards, we'll go into my final thoughts for you guys that don't know how the show works. I usually go monologue, then through the news stories, then my final thoughts on what was going on. So, with that, let us get going, shall we? Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Right on. Okay, here we go to WMBF. Yes, we covered this uh, yesterday's uh, segment where because a bar broke executive uh, orders, now they're trying to go after the liquor license, but the bar is going to be fighting back. Let's take a listen. Day to another WMBF investigation we first shared with you last night. Documents received today from the Department of Revenue show Merle's Inlet Bar SBB is fighting the department's determination that its alcohol license should be revoked. Documents released to WMBF News show the DOR argues the bar violated the governor's executive orders. SLED issued the bar an administrative violation on July 23rd. Documents state it was due to events held during the spring bike rally. On September 9th, SBB responded to the DOR by requesting a contested case hearing. WMBF investigates will continue to follow this case to see if the charges against SBB are dismissed. They need to be dismissed. Enough's enough, man. These executive orders, how much you want to bet after the damn election, the, everybody's saying it, everybody's not stupid that these restrictions are going to be lifted. 
How does that make you feel? And that should really uh, open your eyes, especially to you bikers on the other side of the aisle, as I say, of what you're living under. Now, I know there's other bikers who really don't give a crap about politics. Well, you came to the wrong show then because we're going to put the information out there. And my opinion is, how can you vote for a party that enslaves you? Who's going after a biker freaking bar right now, a small business that has workers. They're going after their liquor license because they didn't obey some executive order. Those things most people don't understand only last 30 days. And usually, usually, it has to go in front of the legislator to give them uh, additional uh, powers to keep on going. We all know it doesn't happen because people are too ignorant to get a hold of people, their representatives, and say, hey, you know what? Enough's enough, man. We know what you're doing. We're tired of it. We want our businesses open. We want our jobs so we can make a living. You know, unlike you, who are self made millionaires for serving in a public position, we got to eat. And we're tired of hearing, well, this has to stay closed or that has to stay closed. You know what? And I said it in the previous segment about this story. We've only heard about one death out of Sturges out of 460,000 people. Only a couple hundred ended up with it. Now, may it get bad again because winter's coming? Yes! But these are the same people who are saying we're not going to take a vaccine because they don't want the political win for him. Sad state of affairs when there's people with no common sense. This bar should not have to be fighting for its liquor license. Shouldn't have to. And regardless, uh, you know, because I know in the other segment they freaking interviewed some butch who said, well, I don't want to bring it home my family. I think this is right. They don't care about freedom. What the hell are you even calling yourself a biker for? Because if you don't believe in freedom, what the hell are you doing it for? That's the reason why bikers are always freaking targeted because the real ones don't give a shit. It's the other morons that make us look bad. But anyway, this it stems from the week of July 13th through the 19th, uh, the Myrtle Beach bike uh, rally. This is September. Oh, wait a second. You want to be asses, right? You want to keep them chains on people. Make sure they know who's in charge. Uh, The document showed that the SBB hosted multiple live music events, including a Bone and Thugs and Harmony concert, and the bar did not limit attendance at the concert, which violated Governor Henry McMaster's executive order. How do you... uh, Look what happened in Virginia when you voted for for them idiots. They tried to take all your damn guns. You you can't see through their BS? Are you that ignorant? You elect these people? And down south? Come on, man. My whole family's from down there. What are you, what are you people doing? Really? Quote, For approximately 12 weeks, Four Snakes SBB remained open as a regular concert venue, nightclub, and or adult entertainment venue despite being ordered to remain closed to non-employees. So, they were ordered to remain closed. Their business, their livelihood, the livelihood of their freaking employees, the government said you can't do it. That it was a flagrant disregard for the law and for the health, safety, and welfare. The law? Excuse me? Did your legislature pass that law? Did they extend that executive order after 30 days? I'm thinking maybe not. So how is that a law? And I guarantee the lawyers of this company is probably going to bring bring it up. Uh, SBB can now appeal the decision, their case to administrative law court. 
uh, WMBF investigates. There's obtained a letter from the attorney that shows the bar is fighting the alcohol license revocation. We are co- requesting a contested hearing in the above captioned matter. This office represents the licensee and will be requesting that the court dismiss the charges. And they're going to be uh, investigating that more. But I'd really like you guys to think about that before you do vote in November. Who the hell you're voting for. I don't care if you hate this one or that one. Look who is on the site side of your rights. Anyway, Fox News. Arizona police dog nabs four in $4 million meth bus during traffic stop. More than 89 pounds of meth were found inside the vehicle. That was about to hit your streets. Now, I'm not saying it was a club that did this because I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Four people in Arizona were busted with nearly $4 million worth of meth during a routine traffic stop. According to officials, detectives with the uh, Mojave uh, Area General Narcotics Enforcement Task Force Pull over a vehicle on Interstate 40 in Kingman. That was coming over the border. Uh, A police dog sniffed around the vehicle and alerted law enforcement officers to the possible presence of drugs. Inside the vehicle, officials found several hidden bundles of meth that totaled about 89 pounds. The street value was about 3.9 million. Three men and one woman... German uh, Alvarado, April Aragon, and Marlon Torres, and Moses Morales Marquez were all arrested and faced charges of transportation of dangerous drugs for sale and possession of uh, dangerous drugs. This sounds like a cartel deal uh, that this happened with because I told you that's too much freaking weight. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, some people, uh, I don't know. Uh, but this didn't have to do with biker related. This is the one he sent. This was the article about the monologue. Let's go to a good one here. Memorial ride held in honor of Garner murder teen. Let's take a listen here. During the life of a Garner teen who was shot and killed Sad outside of Bojangles last month, more than 100 people took part in the memorial ride for Veronica Baker. They rode from Wendell to Raleigh and back. Baker's dad said that ride extra special since Veronica loved joining him on his motorcycle rides throughout the country. She had the best heart in the world. She'd help anybody. If she were alive and this worked for somebody else, we'd be here supporting it also. My daughter just loved people. I feel her with me since I got here this morning, but when I asked for a son, the son came out, and that was her. And the money raised from the lunch fundraiser goes to the Masonic Children's Home in Oxford. A baker used to donate her beanie babies to the children there. Man. Sad state of affairs right there. Sad state of the stairs. Uh, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. We got one, then we're going to go to our main article, then back into the uh, next Wall of Shame. Former Richmond officer among two arrested in Hamilton County murder investigation. Ooh, ouch. Two people uh, face murder charges after an investigation into an April homicide investigation. The Hamilton County Sheriff's officers said officers arrested Katrina Fouts and Terry Hopkins in connection with David Fouts' death. Hopkins is a former Richmond, Indiana police officer. This is murder one, by the way. David Fouts was found dead in a ditch near the 2100 block of Overender Dorth Road in April. A multi-agency investigation resulted in charges against Katrina and Terry. Katrina was charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, false informing, and failure to report a corpse. Terry was charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and failure to report a corpse. Anyone with uh, information about the case you guys can look that up but yeah there's a former richmond officer that state of affairs now let's go to new jersey this one just popped up on us 101.5 
A 38-year-old man was shot and killed and another critically wounded early Sunday in an incident at a motorcycle clubhouse with a longtime city presence. Police responded to the Wheels of Soul clubhouse on the 800 block of Prince's Avenue around 1.45 a.m. for a report of a shooting inside. According to both Cam or acting Camden County Prosecutor Jill Mayer and Camden County Police Chief Joseph Reichsaki, uh, Jeremiah Wilkes of Philadelphia was pronounced dead at the scene. The second man who had been shot was taken to an area hospital where he remained in critical condition as of Sunday afternoon. The second man was not publicly identified by police. Uh, they gave no further information on the possible motive. And it goes on to a little history here. Wills of Soul has been active in Camden and other parts of South Jersey since the mid-70s. According to a New York Times report about a shooting incident that left three motorcycle riders critically hurt in that incident, 44 people were arrested. Damn. Let's go to uh, the last one on the wall of shame here out of 4029 News. Arrested, accused of molesting a young girl. 4029's Brett Rains is live and rolling with more on this investigation. Brett? Well, the Roland police chief did not want to talk on camera, but he said that part-time officer Mike Porter was fired two weeks ago, quote, for the betterment of the department. The now former officer is accused of touching a friend's daughter inappropriately. We swore an oath to uh, uh, protect and serve the people. Mike Porter turned himself into Sequoia County investigators on Friday. He's facing a felony lewd act to a child charge. I usually... Uh, look for an outside agency to investigate one of your own. The county is handling the investigation. The Roland police chief says Porter is a fully accredited officer in Oklahoma and that he worked part-time a few days of the week for the department for the past two to three years. Porter was initially placed on leave when a family member of a 12-year-old girl filed a report with the police department, accusing Porter of molesting the girl more than once during the past year. According to the investigator's report, the girl said Porter told her he was giving her a massage and not to tell her mom. The report says one instance happened when Porter was on duty while he was supposed to be patrolling the town of Roland. The report says Porter told investigators he never touched the girl inappropriately, but after looking into the allegations for more than two months, Porter was arrested. He's since been released from jail on a $25,000 bond. They offered him a polygraph multiple times and that uh, he kept putting it off to the next week and the next week and uh, uh, eventually just refused to come. And we just found out that Porter also works for the Fort Smith Public School District as a child oh. nutrition warehouse supervisor. A spokesperson for the school district says he's been placed on leave from that job. And we've also learned that a second potential victim has come forward to investigators with similar allegations that date back 22 years ago. That investigation is ongoing. Man, 22 years ago. You, you Can you imagine how many freaking kids this guy molested? My God, man. You know what? Until s I'll get that in my final thoughts. Now, this one pisses me off. All right, man. We're back. Don't forget Hollywood and China Doll over on our Hollywood and China Doll uh, evening show. YouTube channel as well as all the uh, major uh, podcasting platforms. That last story, baby. Yeah, now I'm hotter than hot. Over a 22 year span, there could have been more kids. That's just as bad as freaking priests, man, in the Catholic Church. You know, these kids have to be the strongest individuals that I know. They get put through these type of things, and they still come forward and report it. That's why I love Baca, uh, Rebels on uh, a Mission, the whole nine yards that try to help these kids. Help them stand up in court to freaking uh, animals like this. I've been seeing a lot of stories on the wall of shame about bad Leos coming out 
with these kind of charges. And you know what? I'm actually glad that somebody's doing something about it. But there has to be something that we could do better to prevent it. You got drug dealers getting har harsher freaking sentences for freaking 420 and all that than these child molesters are getting. Some of these animals only get 5, 10 years. Next thing you're out, they're out. Cry baby me, I got a mental disorder, blah, blah, blah. No, you're on a damn power trip. You're trying to make up with, uh, you know, your shortfalls, man. And you go after kids. That is weak, and it's no wonder that they have to put you guys in protective custody or separate prison for all you pedophiles. Because you deserve everything you get. Here, here's how, you know, I would suggest dealing with somebody like that. You know, they're in prison, you know, a couple years, you know, nice broomsticks every freaking day. Pass them around the freaking cell block. And then finally freaking uh, disembowel them. That is just some sick stuff what you do to these kids. And I know out there, a lot of people have to think the same way I do. Oh, well, everybody except the freaking tree huggers. But, you know, in California, they're trying to lessen the penalties for uh, predators. Where the hell does that come from? Oh, because it's going to affect uh, the gay community. Man, give me a break. Quit all that crap. And you know what? It's about kids. Lessen the penalties. No, you should be enhancing them. You got the, uh, what is it, the ACLU that comes out when, you know, a state uh, proposes chemical castration. That's, uh, at least it's chemical, man. A lot of people I know just cut that schlong off. Let them bleed out. Because that's something that you just don't do. It is the worst of the worst offenses that anybody can do. And for cops... Who do it. Uh, now I'm not saying all cops. So don't get on me on that one. At least there was investigations done. At least this was uncovered. That way it was taken care of. You got to give you kudos for that. But there's too many that are sworn to protect and serve. That are ended up in this stuff. With kids. With uh, women that they pull over and arrest. Next thing you know. They're screwing them, you know, the rape and them, all that kind of stuff, man. Police, you gotta do your damn jobs, man. You gotta get rid of the dirty ones or you're gonna have the hatred against Leo continue. 2020 is just the beginning. We, you know what? This has to be the worst year in the history of this country. And that's saying a lot since there was a civil war for four years. Which I think we're about to get into again anyway. Right now we're in a soft civil war. Everybody's, you know, chosen them sides. But what was it with California lowering the penalties, man? Who even thinks that way? I'll tell you. The representatives you voted for out in California. Those are the people... That you voted for. How do you like them now? Well, I'll tell you how you like them. You'll get all pissed off, say this and that, and then guess what? Just like here in Chicago, just like in New York, you'll vote for them again. So you're the hypocrite. Not them, they're just feeding off of you. But you're too stupid to see it. As far as the bar is concerned, fight them. Fight them like hell. Go after them. Enough small businesses have been hurt. I enough of them. It is time for the citizens to remind these people they work for us. It's time for people to get away from all that DNR crap. You got to start voting for people that have the same beliefs as you do. 
at least get educated about who you're going to vote for. Their policies. Lots of people been brainwashed to vote one party over the other. And that right there is a sad state of affairs. That is not how this country was founded on. For those who do not know your history, George Washington was petrified of the party system. He foresaw what's going on now at the signing of the, uh, the Constitution. As soon as he took off uh, as, uh, oath as a president, he knew this was going to happen. The one party that's been there since the beginning is the one party that has caused chaos in this country since its founding. And if you don't know what party I'm talking about, I don't know what to tell you. It's the same party who thinks that government should control everything. And here is a small business just trying to make it. You were ordered closed. They don't care who's paying them people's bills. What, you think a little $600 extra is going to help these people? Or a $1,200 stimulus check is going to help them? No, uh-uh. People are suffering right now because of what you're... You know what? It's all political posturing for you. You do not give a damn about the people. Not a damn. It's only about you. The founders never intended on people to get rich in office. They were supposed to serve the public. George Washington, after two years, he didn't want to be seen as a king. God forbid Congress and the senators do the same damn thing. Country's about to go through hell because of this freaking judge who just died. I wonder if uh, she's answering all those, uh, you know, about all those babies that were killed. I, you know what, I ain't going to hit below the belt, but it is what it is. But we're about to go through hell because of that. We're going to use every arrow in our shiver, that idiot uh, speaker said. You know what? We voted that way because idiots like you. I'm hoping what happened with uh, you know, the elections in London happens here when they were just freaking leveled. Their freaking liberal party. Uh, but anyway... Good story with the bikers helping out with that uh, murder girl sad state of affairs right there. But it was a good turnout. Uh, the one about the meth, man. What can I tell you? You know, like I said in my monologue, I'll never approve of it. I think it's freaking disgusting. I think them people ruin people's lives. I don't care if you're a biker. I don't care if you're a freaking member of a gang. I don't care what you are. You're a scumbag. That's straight up. You're a scumbag. I have nothing for you. You're pushing that kind of stuff. I don't want to hear, you know, your sob story. I don't want to hear this or I don't want to hear that. You're just a freaking piece of garbage. You're hooking kids on that crap. And our kids already have enough freaking problems, let me tell you, than to add that on to it. Now, I think that was more of a cartel thing because of the amount of money involved and the, uh, the poundage. But that stuff's also tied to bikers all the time. And I'm glad, you know what, I got an open platform where you can write. And you know what, I'll answer those questions on air for you. But give me freaking time to do it. Not like I do this all damn day sitting in front of a damn computer. So anyway... That was my closing thoughts on this whole show. Let me know what you guys think in the uh, comments section. Take a minute to read the comments. Some of the stuff I got to deal with, for Christ's sakes. Uh, but anyway, don't forget, tune in to the Hollywood and China Dial to, uh, show tonight over on YouTube. 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. It has to be something like 18 things. That your man wants you to do secretly or something like that. It's, you know what, we have all kinds of killer fun over there. Uh, until then, I'll catch you tomorrow, guys. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. 
Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!